Hi friends, I'm so glad that you could join me here today for another Bible story. Today is a really important day for the church. It feels like we're having a lot of those lately. Today we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. If you listened to our story last week, you might remember the story of Jesus rising up into heaven just after he promised his followers that soon the Holy Spirit would come to be their friend and companion forever. And Jesus told them that the Spirit would give them power to share about him with everyone they met near and far. So that's where our story is going to start from today. I always think that this story is far more interesting in my own imagination than it is in any book. The imagination is a wonderful gift from God. And with it, we can create pictures and sounds in our minds that bring God's story to life in us. So let's take a moment to practice using our imaginations. Close your eyes. Try to imagine a kangaroo jumping onto the roof of your house or apartment. What color is the kangaroo? What sound does it make when it lands on your roof? Okay, now pretend to erase that picture away so your mind is like a clean new piece of paper or a blank screen. Now your imagination is ready to do some work. To start, I invite you to sit or lie down somewhere that you feel comfortable. You don't want to feel like you're sitting on, you know, on something uncomfortable or that something's bothering you. So find a place to sit or lie down where you're comfortable. Hands and feet to yourself. Now, close your eyes. We're going to calm our minds by breathing in and out slowly and gently. In and out. blowing all the extra thoughts away so we can start out with a blank screen. In and out. After Jesus rose into heaven, his disciples walked back to Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit. Now imagine this. When the day of Pentecost had finally arrived, they were all gathered together in one place, one house. They were sitting on the floor and on the steps, standing in the corners, perched in the windowsills and taking up every available piece of furniture. There was Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, the other James and Simon and Judas, son of James and Mary. Jesus' mom was also there and his brothers. There were all the women who followed Jesus, like Mary and Martha and lots of other people, 120 all together. It was crowded. And suddenly, suddenly there came this sound. It was like a fierce rushing wind and it filled the whole house. Everyone stopped, as if frozen. Sparks of light flickered here and there, then flames of fire appeared over each person in the room. It was the Spirit. The wind of the Spirit swished and swirled and filled them right up, and they began to speak. Every one of them, and not just in their own language, but in many, many languages. The languages of all the surrounding countries. The noise and commotion drew people from all over the city running to the house. They heard the sound of the rushing wind. They heard the clamor of voices. 
what was going on. And as they grew closer, they slowed down, totally confused. The people who lived in Jerusalem spoke all kinds of languages. They were a diverse group, but for some reason they could hear the Galilean people in the house speaking in their own languages. In their own languages, they heard them speak of God's love and power. How was it possible? Some of them stood with their mouths hanging open, completely bewildered. Others sneered and said, ha, oh, they've just drunk a whole lot of wine. But Peter, he clambered up on a bench and raised his voice so everyone could hear and he said, whoa, 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 it's only nine in the morning. We haven't had too much wine, but something far more exciting has happened. Many years ago, the prophet Joel said that someday God's spirit would be poured out on all people. And not that long ago, Jesus promised us that we would be baptized by the spirit to be Jesus' witnesses, to share his good news, not only here, not only to you, but to the ends of the earth. Well, the spirit has come and filled up to overflowing with the power of the Spirit, Peter began to share with them the wonders of God's radical love and justice that was greater even than death. Jesus had gone to be with God, but the Spirit had come just as he said it would. You can open your eyes that's our story for today. If you want, you could try and draw a picture of what you saw in your imagination. Or you could go on a Google image search and see if you could find a piece of art that looks like the picture you saw. Or you could describe the picture you saw to your friends or someone in your family. I've also attached a coloring page in the description of the video that you could color your very own spirit flame. Illustrated Ministry has a really great coloring page for this. There are all kinds of ways that we can be witnesses for Jesus, to show Jesus love. And the spirit is the one who shows us how to do this. But sometimes that's a little confusing. How does the spirit guide us? How do we listen for the Spirit? It's, we can't see the Spirit, so it can be a little bit confusing. So next week, a few of my animal friends, like Old Turtle and Bartimaeus the Elephant and Morty the Bison and uh, Erda the Eagle, are going to join me to talk a bit about the Holy Spirit and how she can be our guide as we share Jesus's love with other people and with our whole uh, world. So that's our story for today. Before we go, I'd like to bless you. So if you're sitting with someone else, you can take your palm and put it on their shoulder or their arm, or you can put your palm over your heart. May God bless you and keep you May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you, and may the love of God flow over and all around you, like the Spirit, and give you peace. I will see you next Sunday.